works. <laughs> Hi, I'm Darcy Loma, and happy Thursday. I'm here today with Nancy Turngren and Sharon Barber, who are both members of my coaching team. We get together every about month or so uh, for mentoring, to talk about case studies, to freshen up our skills on the core competencies from the International Coach Federation. And today is our team meeting. The rest of the team is joining us by Zoom, so they're taking a break while the three of us do a Thoughtfully Fit Thursday Live, so thank you both for being here. We're going to talk today and look specifically at one of the six components of being Thoughtfully Fit, which is endurance. And endurance is all about being able to have the strength to overcome obstacles, to dream big, to do what you love in your life. And it does take endurance to be able to overcome those obstacles. And it's about being able to embrace a growth mindset that if I put in the right amount of energy and focus, I can accomplish my goals. As opposed to a fixed mindset which says, you know, I'm just, I'm not good at math. I'm not a runner. I, I've never been a runner. I'm not good at public speaking. And there's sort of this defeatist mm -hmm. attitude that um, is, what would be the opposite of empowering? That's, I guess, defeating. Yeah, defeating. Yeah. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people come to coaching um, for two reasons. They either have a big dream, a big goal that they want to accomplish, but they don't know where to start or how to go about it. Or sometimes they come in and they don't really know what they want. They just want something. They don't feel fulfilled. They don't feel energized. And so this is a place where endurance can be helpful. So we're just going to have a conversation and, and tap into the wisdom of Nancy and Sharon who coach a lot of clients. And I want to just start by hearing um, your comments about where you think people uh, get stuck um, mm -hmm. on achieving their goals and dreaming big. I, I would agree. I think the when you mentioned the, the stories that people tell themselves, that kind of continu continuously comes up over and over of, I'm, I can't do that, or I can't do that, or somebody told me I can't do that. And once they realize that that's been something that they just have had kind of wired in their brain, and if they can rewire that and come up with some different story or some different, oh, I can, or try it and not be scared to try it, mm -hmm. then, you know, then that dream kind of opens up, like you said, and it, they have that endurance to really like, oh, okay, I can do that. I can, I can keep going mm -hmm. forward. I can keep trying the next thing and the next thing. So it opens up a, a Okay, so we just had a little bit of technical difficulties, but it looks like we are back rolling live, so apologize if there was a little bit of a bleep, a blurp uh, disruption on your end. Um, so we were just talking about habits. Yeah, right. Nancy was saying those stories that get in the way for people when they're going for the goal or trying to do something different. Um, and often, yeah, I find that they're invisible too. People don't realize that they're telling themselves these stories often. I'm not good mm -hmm. enough, or I can't do that, or whatever whatever it is but once we find that then we can shine light on it and say okay do you still need this in some way is there some part of this story you want to keep yeah this part kind of makes me feel safe but this other part is keeping me too stuck i don't want it anymore and so that's where, where we go into that opening and find out okay what what would you prefer what what's the new story what's the new way of being what's the new action that comes from that place um, so people start experimenting with new actions or way, way of being with themselves, whatever it is. And one little step at a time, usually, sometimes there's a big inspired action, but more often it's like an experiment. Here, try, what's one easy, fun way? What's one, yeah, one way to step into this new way of being? And like you said, once they take this one step and go, oh, yeah, I've got new data now. I have new information that says I can do this. And then it just starts to roll. And one of the things I want to just ask each of you is how, so there's a big gap, a big step maybe from um, recognizing I've got these limiting beliefs or things that aren't serving me um, to, to making changes. Mm -hmm. how, how do you help somebody recognize and create awareness that this isn't serving me? Or, oh my God, I didn't even know that I was holding on to that value that my parents had that isn't really a value for me. How do you help a client unfold that? Um, I think a couple ways. One is visioning. So really, because if they're sensing that something isn't 
isn't quite right or they're not fulfilled and then there's something missing so kind of visioning picturing you know kind of ooh, if you know you could make, wave the magic wand what would it look like and how would you experience i i've um you know i'll get I'll like oh i'm gonna look something up if i'm working and i'm online and i'm and then i get then i'm like oh something pops up and then i'm like oh i'm gonna do that and then I, it gets sidetracked and so and then the next thing I know, I'm deleting emails that I was like, oh, these, I need to get rid of these. So I'm not totally off track. And so I would catch myself and say, okay, normally you would, you would follow that other trail and get totally sidetracked. So do something different. Do something mm. different right now means, okay, I'm not going to click on that. I'm going to stay focused on what I was doing, finish that, and then move to the next thing. So it's just catching yourself, having that awareness, catching yourself, and then choosing to do something different. And... Just that one, you know, once you realize it and do it over and over and over again, you're kind of like, oh, I've been doing that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and once you realize I've been doing that a lot, that's what creates the habit. Right. right. It's and just... doing that and doing that and doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's a default setting. So we start to change the default right. setting. And, and like you said, raising awareness is the huge first step. And we might stay there a little while and go, okay, let's slow it down. So uh -huh. what do you notice first? What do you mean first? I noticed that I've already yelled at my kid. Okay, let's, so let's just back it up and slow it down. Oh yeah, there's kind of this energy rising. Oh, I have this thought. Why can't they just do it? So we slow it down till it's like to this point like, oh yeah, it starts with this little teeny thing in my stomach. So then they start noticing it way back then and it's easier to do something different. Oh, there's the thing in my stomach. Right. Hmm. What did I think I wanted to do differently? Right, I'm going to take a breath and then I'm going to get curious. What's going on there, Joey? <laughs> it feels a little <laughs> awkward at first, but it's something different. It leaves the new results, a new data, and it just and then it can keep unfolding. And it makes me think about as you were talking when when we're looking at overcoming obstacles, you don't need to you don't need to identify and overcome them all all at once, as you were saying. Like, what's one thing you could yeah. do differently? And I regularly hear from clients after four months, like, oh my God, how did I get here? I've, I'm doing something, I've been wanting to do this for four years. And I think part of that is what you talked about as a strategy, Nancy, that you just look at the next thing. You just mm -hmm. slow it down and look at the next thing. Shouldn't have turned off the, um, the okay. home Wi-Fi. So, sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on. There must be, I don't know, is it a full moon? <laughs> something must be happening that the technology is, is being tweaky. So, um, and I kind of lost my, mm -hmm. Oh, one thought. thing it doesn't have you don't have to change everything at once yeah. one small change leads to another and also reflecting back to what Nancy said so there is that you can just do one small thing and if you have that vision and that sense of how how the feelings you'll have once you've created this thing or done this differently to tap into that to tap into what's important about this change um, so combining those two vision and it's just one little change at a time seems like a very powerful so it's really, it, yeah, if you've got some kind of a dream, some kind of a, mm -hmm. a, a, a what you want, it sounds like there's two strategies that we're playing mm -hmm. with. One is visioning what that looks like. How would you know when you got it? Mm -hmm. How would you feel? What would be different? And then there's all, the, other, the other strategy is, is taking a look at what are the obstacles? What's getting mm -hmm. in the way? Mm -hmm. So if we back it up, do you ever have clients that come into coaching who don't know what that dream is, don't know what that is that they want. They just know they need something different. Mm -hmm. um, and if so, how do you, how do you help? Where do you start? How do you help those clients? I'll let you start. I've been starting, okay. so I'll let you start. Where do I start? That's a hard one, though. Oh. Well, it seems kind of organic, <laughs> but um, where do I start? Well, we start with where they are now. How do you, how do you know you're dissatisfied? What's, when does that show up? Oh, now that we know where it shows up, I mean, we just start getting curious and unraveling the story. So it shows up in this place. So how would you know if you were satisfied? What would mm -hmm. be different? What's the time that you were, that you felt most alive or you felt most satisfied? Or you, We start learning about these times where the person felt more themselves, more on top of the world, whatever it is. And at the same time that we're learning about the important elements, so I'm also pulling kind of core values, what's really important to the person. And so we start building around that. And at some point, they might be like, yeah, if I could just feel healthier again, or yeah. you know, just really speak my authentic voice at work, like I used to at da-da-da. And so we start 
saying, okay, what's that going to look like? And what are there competencies to build? What's missing? What's or if it's going to? Oh, right. It's um, still going. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for uh, staying with us through the technical obstacles. I, I we were just laughing that there's a little bit of a parallel process going on. The universe is kind of winking at us that we're having to overcome <laughs> these these obstacles. Um, but but what it sounds like as you're talking, Sharon, is that it's okay if someone comes in, they know that they want to create some kind of change in their life, but they don't know change to what, mm -hmm. that that's okay. You meet Absolutely. them where they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. What mm -hmm. would you add to that? Yeah. Um, really kind of just this very similar. Um, as far as adding to that, I think it's, um, you know, I think that's really kind of that, that stirring in your gut feeling and, and trusting that and then using that as part of your movement forward because you're, you're, you've trusted something's not right so you're you know reaching out and, and getting help with that and, and partnering with someone to kind of help figure it out and just knowing that it's okay whatever unfolds is going to unfold um, instead of trying to put it you know put it in some sort of nice box that it's it's okay mm -hmm. it's, if it's messy it's okay if you go this way and then you go that way and you know wh whichever direction you go eventually you know it will feel right and you'll know it mm. And you used a word that I'd love mm -hmm. to underscore is partnering. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that's a core competency and it's what coaching is built on. That it's that it's not this hierarchy. It's not like I am the coach and I have the wisdom. <laughs> it's it's really a partnership and saying huh. so and, and and love how you just said, so yeah, what what do you want? And what does that look like? And what's getting in the way? And allowing that space for the person to not only create some new awareness, but also I think um, for you to help point out the blind spots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just had my master swimming a couple hours ago and dog on it. If my coach didn't tell me, I mean, I'm swimming and he's like, Darcy, you're stopping your pull halfway. You're missing all this power. I had no idea. That was a blind spot that I could not have. And okay. here we are. Here we are. <laughs> so, wow. Um, so I, I was recognizing that there was no way I would have known mm -hmm. that I was not pulling through my whole stroke without getting that feedback. In this case, it happened outside to be my coach. Eyes. It's outside eyes. Now, maybe if maybe if I had a video, but I don't even think of a video. I, I don't even think I knew that I that you're yeah. supposed to pull. You know, I haven't really thought about that. Right. So it sounds like that's another piece that you can provide is right. holding up the mirror. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. often just don't see ourselves. We don't hear ourselves. Even reflecting someone back, saying something that sounded important that they just said, saying it back to them. Most of the time they'll go, did I say that? Mm -hmm. Wow. But so even that, let alone being able to see the actions you're taking or the in the inside wondering if there's a habit, nature, story you're telling yourself. Like we just don't see those things. So yeah, the, cool, the, the other cool mm -hmm. thing is when they, sometimes when they say it out loud, you don't even have to, you know, with that partner, you don't have to mirror it back. It's just once they say it out loud, they're kind of like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that, oh, I just said that. I, <laughs> I've never said that out loud to anybody before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been in my head, but when I say it out loud now, it brings mm -hmm. up something different for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and that's why I think part of the reasons of, of, of there being a, being a partnership is you're, you're, and what, what's an important component of that partnership is that there's safety. Mm -hmm. And when you establish trust and safety and intimacy, somebody can say something that they maybe have never mm -hmm. said out loud before and mm -hmm. that because it's safe yeah. and it's mm -hmm. completely confidential and there's no judgment. no judgment and also one that I would prefer not to have <laughs> 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 we are having some fun over here um, yeah so so being able to just say things that maybe you wouldn't otherwise say because there's no emotional attachment you mm -hmm. say I want to quit my job and move uh, you say that to a friend or a spouse or a child, mm -hmm. like, whoa, that has a big impact on me, mm -hmm. on my right. life. You say that to a coach, it's like, oh, what is that? What's what's fun about that? Or what, you know, <laughs> just you curious. Can explore. Uh, curious, not attached. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you for sticking with us. I don't know what the technology was like on your end. On ours, it kind of kept stopping, so we're going to...